I believe Allah is the best of planners. I believe he had a plan for me. And I can look back on this journey and see his guidance towards Islam. Allah guides whomsoever he wills. February of this year, I felt drawn to wear hijab. I loved its beauty and what it stood for. And so I slowly began wearing it. It was an amazing experience. I felt liberated for the first time in my life. Each day, I loved being on Instagram and learned something new about Islam. And by the end of Ramadan, I truly felt that I went through it with all my friends. In my heart, I felt this joy and fullness as they celebrated Eid. And I rejoiced with them. That was the turning point for me. I knew I couldn't live without Islam then. I did my Shahada. My husband has become my biggest supporter. Even though he and the kids remain Mormon. He supports me and loves me and wants me to be happy. He'll help me put my shoes on after I pray. He'll make sure I have a place and time to pray. Even when we're traveling, he'll pull over to the side of the road so that I can pray. I love being a woman in Islam. Salam alaikum everyone. Welcome to my channel. I am Rahima and today I am doing a very much requested video of my journey to Islam. So let's get right into it. Let's start at the very beginning of my story. And I have written this out on my phone and we'll be reading from it. So don't mind me doing that. I wanted to be able to record as well um, my journey and have it down in writing so I can put it in my journal, but I'll also be sharing it on here. So my wish for this video is to share my journey and not to inflict hate or stir up any anger to one religion, especially the one that I have left. That is not the focus of this video at all. Please understand, I have left my previous religion with peace and closed the door behind me. I've walked through to another life and faith. <laughs> and have so much peace and faith and love that I don't need to bash where I was. So I pray that as I share some things with you today, um, you won't see it as me hating on anything. I only want peace. So let's start at the very beginning. If you haven't watched my previous videos on my healing journey, let me share a little bit of that with you. I grew up in a cult, a cult created by my dad, who claimed he was a prophet for our family and received revelations from his God to validate his abuse, his lies, and his decisions. Everything was controlled from friends to money to what I wore to my hair. It was a world of spiritual, emotional, mental and sexual abuse. My dad also claimed to be Mormon, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And every Sunday we participated in church and had to look the part each week that our world was just fine at home. The doctrine I grew up with was Mormon based, but changed to what my father received revelations for. For example, my oldest brother was kicked out at 16 years old, around there. He did not follow my father's rules and was subject to physical abuse. He was then kicked out. My father then began to teach us kids that were left at home that my mother's health problems, she had depression, thyroid, and mental health problems. My, it was my mom becoming a savior for my brother 
and would suffer his sins to help him return to us. And as a young girl of seven or eight-ish, I believed him. I believed all his words and revelations. He was my dad. He claimed he was visited by angels, had the power to choose if he would keep living or die, received most of his revelations in the shower, and kept a book of revelations that only priesthood men could see. His control was in every part of my life. I didn't know any different. His teachings and the Mormon church's teachings were at times so very different, but I never knew the difference as he sat each week and took the sacrament. Even participating in calling such as a high council member and second counselor in the bishopric, very high callings. But I didn't know that anything bad was really happening at home. It was normal. I, I thought it was normal and that all members were like our home. I did escape my upbringing. You can see my whole video on escaping a, my cult, like growing up and what happened. But I did escape and moved from South Dakota to Utah to attend college and live on my own. I became self-sufficient. I became independent. It was then I started to realize that things were off with what I grew up with. It wasn't right. What I was taught wasn't right. How I was abused wasn't right. I married and had children and stayed in the Mormon faith. But with my depression over the years and medical problems with each child, we did not attend church regularly when we were first married. My husband had a hard time attending church when he got home from his mission, and we married soon after his mission, so he would rather go to the mountains than be in church. I had never missed Sunday church, so this was very hard for me. But we began to move around a lot too, and starting a new ward was very hard for me. It felt a lot like my childhood of moving around every two years, so people wouldn't catch on to my father's abuse, even though that wasn't the case now. It brought back many memories. Many times I felt like I didn't fit in either, so I stayed home. Then I began to have flashbacks of my father and his sexual abuse in my life. Memories that had stayed locked away until a time I was safe. I had a lot going on in my life, stress-wise, on top of this. But I was also pregnant and our family was living with my in-laws. It was not a good time in my life. I began to pick my hair to cope because I didn't know how to handle it. Trichotillomania. It was so severe. I had to shave my head to help combat it. It was a medical necessity for me. So at this time, I came forward to my bishop about my abuse. On one hand, I didn't know how to deal with these flashbacks and needed help. And also, my hope was to bring some sort of justice religiously to me about my father. My bishop was amazing, so loving, so kind, so helpful. He's an amazing man. However, the way the church is set up, it did not turn out good. A stake president is above a bishop, and both my stake president and my dad's stake president and his bishop were involved. And I had to speak to them via the phone because my dad resides in South Dakota. Everything was put on paper. I talked about my sexual abuse as a child and also as a young woman before leaving for Utah. They did, of course, take it seriously. And I had such high hopes that my dad would be held accountable by the religion he claims he follows. In fact, he hides behind it to validate his twisted self. That finally the years of spiritual 
and sexual abuse would be in a way healed for me by him being disciplined by the church. Did you know that growing up, my dad told me daily that if he died that day, he would go to heaven, the celestial kingdom, the highest level of heaven in, our, in the Mormon faith. He said he was perfect before God. So meetings were held and my dad was called in. And what happened? What do you think he did? He denied it, of course, of course he did. In his twisted mind, he thinks he is perfect and has done nothing wrong. So, from what I understand, how the church works, they told me because he denied it, and because I don't have a witness, nothing can be done. Of course there wasn't a witness. I was the only girl in my family. I was always alone. And this really crushed my world. That the church didn't hold him accountable and my testimony, my testimony against him, did not uphold anything. It really hurt me badly. And horrifically, his abuse continued with my mom and my younger brother still living at home. My mom was more controlled than me, had to wear dresses, couldn't cut her hair, couldn't even attend her own father's funeral because my dad wouldn't let, him, let her. His abuse went deep. She died in 2017 and I 100% believe it was caused by him. He carried her dead body in the trunk of his car for a few days after she had died. Why would someone do that? Why weren't the police notified? I'm so mortified. On top of it, he decided not to tell anyone my mother died, including her own mother, until a month later, and she was already cremated. No funeral, that was his control. Even in her death, he controlled her. Should I mention my younger brother too? He committed suicide because he knew it was the only way for him in his controlled environment to get out. He was in his 30s and not allowed to live on his own. He had to take care of his poor dad. So one morning, my dad and my brother got in an argument, a fight. My brother, who had to live in the basement with concrete floors, no walls done as well, and piles of hoarding junk around him from my parents, left to his room in the basement because of the fight. My dad locked him in the basement. Yes, there was a lock to lock him down there. My brother, I believe, had come to the end, what he felt was the end, and that he couldn't handle it anymore, and that he saw that there was no way out, and shot himself. My dad heard the shot, but he left the house to call the police to lie and tell them he was afraid my bro of my brother because there were guns in the house and he was afraid he was gonna get hurt. My dad was gonna get hurt. Now, if I had heard my child shoot a gun, I would have run to him agonizing and knowing what just happened. He knew. I would try to save his life, be there in his last moments. But no, my dad hid at a hotel, claiming my soft and tender-hearted brother was the villain. It took the police a long time to get to my brother's body with the piles of junk everywhere. My dad is a very wicked and evil man. He has two deaths on his hands 
and I know he will be held accountable to Allah at judgment. Anyway, let's go back to me having to shave my head during this whole time of flashbacks and failing to get my dad held responsible for his actions. It was devastating to me to shave my head. I cried each time I did it. It was the only way for me to not do it. I had to shave my head. People always complimented my hair <laughs> and copied my hairstyles. So it was really, really hard. But that's when I turned to head covering. That was in 2010, 12 years ago. I had a blog at the time, a very popular blog actually, <laughs> and shared my journey on there. And I began to connect with Jewish women who covered religiously. That was how I found great coverings to wear. I did such a horrible job at wrapping my head at first. <laughs> It took time also for me to actually wear them in public. I did wear wigs from time to time, but I hated the itchiness and they were uncomfortable. So I stuck with head scarves and I did that for a few years. Um, on Facebook years ago, during this time, I found Rapunzel, the store, the company. I joined their group on Facebook and that is when my world opened up. <laughs> I had no idea that women from all over the world covered their hair for so many reasons. Religion, self-esteem, medical, faith, just because, whatever. <laughs> it, I made so many wonderful friends from many faiths to, to no faith who covered for so many reasons. So it was then my reasons for covering my hair turned spiritual. I began to research, I began to study, I began to pray about it, and I covered full time for years, sometimes taking a break. But my reasons turn from medical to faith. I have always had a love for all religions. My mother installed that in me, even amidst the horribleness of my growing up years. I never once heard her put down another religion. My dad, yes, but not my mom. She was a free spirit, as much as she could be, even getting her bachelor's in women's studies, where she often took me to classes with her when I was a child um, about women and freedom and women's rights. Um, even including lesbian rights classes. And that's shocking coming from my mom because she was so controlled by my dad, so fiercely, even more so than me. This must have been her way to let that inner spirit of hers out and experience some sort of freedom. So over the 20 years of my marriage, I read books from all sorts of religions. I took that knowledge and applied it to my life. Faith has always been a very big deal to me, and truth has always been a big deal to me, and I found truth in many ways. And then Instagram came. After years of watching some of my favorite YouTubers like Dina Tokyo and Omaya, whom I love still, I became very much interested in fashion and beauty, something I had never been exposed to my whole life. Um, and they were on Instagram too. So this passion for fashion and head wrapping, being a part of this began in me. I started an Instagram page. I followed all my favorites and my friends of different faiths and started my journey on there. And that was in 2017. So it was then I started becoming friends with these amazing Muslim women from all over the world. We even started a group to grow our Instagram accounts and I'm still friends with all of them all these years later. But I watched them for years, living their faith. And yes, I admit at first, it was the beauty and the fashion of hijab and the modesty that drew me in. I found the style so elegant and beautiful that you could cover modestly 
and yet looks so amazing and beautiful and stylish. I tried a few times to wear a hijab, but I wasn't good at it. But you can see my style evolution on Instagram, little by little, covering up more and more, and my faith in covering grew so much. Initially, when I was a Christian, it was because of Corinthians 11 in the Bible. But to me, I covered because I found it pleasing to God. It made me a better person. It helped my self-esteem. It made me feel beautiful. I felt it was a crown of who I am and wanted to be. I desired to be separate from the world, including the way I dressed. So after five years of watching these amazing Muslim women and many who became my dear friends, I had the intense desire to know more about their faith and would from time to time study and learn different things. Then a year or so ago, after a four year depression battle, that I had and being at my, the lowest in my life, I decided to get help. I received therapy for my childhood and the abuse I endured and it saved my life. Um, I spent months working hard and healing, learning about my past and healing from it. I spent hours mending my soul and heart to bring it to a place of peace and understanding with an amazing therapist whom I love dearly. I was finally free from my father and his control, which had been controlling my life even subconsciously as a grown woman too. Many of the things I went through inside my soul over the last 20 years while being married were toxic thinking from my upbringing that was affecting who I was today. I learned to break free from it and finally stood at a place in my life where my future was completely empty, that I could create it, decide what I wanted for it, fill it with whatever I wanted. At the end of my therapy, I began looking at my faith beliefs, the toxic situation I grew up in religiously, and though there were many things that began to not sit right with me in my religion, I did not want anything to do with the religion of my dad in any way. I wanted to shut this last door of that life and walk forward with a new life. I believe Allah is the best of planners. I believe he had a plan for me and I can look back on this journey and see his guidance towards Islam. Allah guides whomsoever he wills. February of this year, I felt drawn to wear hijab. I loved its beauty and what it stood for. And so I slowly began wearing it. And I eventually wore it full time. I wore it for the first time out in public February 22nd. It was an amazing experience. I felt liberated for the first time in my life, that I had the power to choose what I put on my body and show to the world. I truly believe Allah put that into my heart. These little steps, each leading me home. I had a very intense desire to read the Quran something I had always been curious about, but it was an intense desire. So I ordered one on Amazon. My husband knew a bit of what was going through my thoughts on the church and my increasing interest in Islam. I had mentioned to him I wanted to read the Quran, but he insisted that he didn't want it in the house. Before I go on, you have to see his way of thinking was not out of control. He had never controlled me ever, but it was out of fear of me leaving a religion that we had based much of our marriage around. So I hid the Quran for weeks, but this intense desire to read it kept filling up my heart. I finally opened its pages the first weekend in April. 
Now the Quran translation I bought was not the best. It was actually hard for me to understand, but I found through a TikTok a clear English translation of it, and that is what I used to read it. And my heart longed to read it. I had never felt that way about a religious book before. I wanted to soak all of it up, spend time in its words. It brought so much peace to my soul instantly, every time I opened it. Okay, so Ramadan happened. What an amazing blessed month. I find it amazing too that as I began reading the Quran, it was during the month of Ramadan. And I don't think that was a coincidence, but a gift from Allah. Ramadan is the blessed month of Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him, his first revelation. And here I was reading the Quran. I'm so amazed at this because I didn't know this until much more into the month. Anyway, so many of the women I follow on Instagram were observing and celebrating Ramadan. I couldn't get away from it on my feet and I didn't want to. I watched and I learned so much from my friends. I watched as they fasted and struggled, yet they were filled with so much joy to celebrate and do this. It amazed me. Each day, I loved being on Instagram and learned something new about Islam. And by the end of Ramadan, I truly felt that I went through it with all my friends. In my heart, I felt this joy and fullness as they celebrated Eid and I rejoiced with them. That was the turning point for me. I knew I couldn't live without Islam then. I did my Shahada here in my home at the end of May, declared my faith before Allah and went forward. June 3rd, I announced it publicly on all my social media. And it hasn't been easy. It has been a roller coaster of emotions. Um, but my husband has become my biggest supporter. Even though he and the kids remain Mormon. It was very hard at first and we still do have hard moments as we face things because changing a religion changes the dynamics of the family. But I'm thankful for my husband and our relationship. He supports me and loves me and wants me to be happy. And in fact, his love for me and his acceptance of changing my religions has been so tender to see his heart soften. Of course, he still wants me to be Mormon, but he'll help me put my shoes on after I pray. He'll make sure I have a place and time to pray, even when we're traveling. He'll pull over to the side of the road so that I can pray. He encourages me to go to the mosque, to make friends in Islam. He'll take the kids to the store, so I have time to study and learn about Islam. True love. So, it wasn't all warm, fuzzy feelings though. It's been difficult and hard making the switch. I lost a lot of good friends. That was heart-wrenching. People felt it was their place automatically that they needed to save me. I received so many messages posting on my Facebook that God had inspired them to speak to me. I was told I was going to hell and that I would be responsible for those people who followed me. I was even told that I was causing controversy in my small town of 250 people. That shocked me, as I thought most people actually didn't really care about what religion I was and were very supportive of me head covering and wearing hijab and it wasn't a big deal, but now I'm kind of unsure. But I soon found out who my true friends were. 
my Instagram followers went down. YouTube has gone down a little bit. People blocked me, unfriended me because of my choice. Um, and at first, after announcing my decision, I was hit very, very hard with hate from people that I thought were my friends. And it hurt very badly. But as the Quran says, with hardship, there is ease. And Allah began working amazing things in my life. I prayed for a Muslim friend here in Utah, and he blessed me with many. For those of you that don't know, I live in a small town of 250 people in the countryside of Utah, far from everything. We only have a church and a school, <laughs> lots of farms and houses there. And I mean, we live far from everything, but there is one more small town out by us that is about 20 miles away. And we go there often to eat at the small cafe or to take pictures for Instagram because they have amazing places for pictures. Well, after having this prayer in my heart, I hadn't told anybody <laughs> um, for a friend. We were sitting at the cafe and had just finished our dinner and in walked a beautiful Muslim woman with her children. Her kids' mouths dropped open. My mouth dropped open. <laughs> my husband couldn't believe it. This doesn't happen where we live. And I know it was a loving gift from Allah to place this woman in my life. And we've been able to get together. And um, it's such a blessing we live so close to each other. I also have met up with some amazing Instagram friends and went to my first Friday prayer at the mosque. The sisterhood and welcoming I have felt has been so overwhelming. I mean, not just here in Utah, but all over the world. Um, I have felt loved. I have felt accepted. I feel like I have true friends and sisters, something I've never had before. I cried my first time at the mosque. It was so beautiful and very moving to me. So, I love Islam. It's beautiful and simple in its beauty. I love the one-on-one -on -one connection I have with Allah as I pray and as I worship Him. That my new life in Islam is just Him and me. I love that I worship only one God. A loving and merciful God who has a plan for me in my life. I love that he is the only judger of me in this life. That no men are no longer in control of telling me whether I am worthy or not. I love being a woman in Islam. The power of the hijab and the liberation I have taking away judgment from others on my physical self. I don't have to fit into society's view of beauty. I don't have to judge myself by that. I get to decide what I show to the world. That's incredible liberation to me. I love representing Islam and my love for Allah and how I dress and how I act. I love the quiet moments of prayer five times a day. As I stand before my Allah, and pour my heart to him afterwards. I finally feel I have come home. I feel peace. I feel joy. I love where my life is headed. So that's my story. That's my journey to Islam and where I'm at right now. It's beautiful and amazing how Allah plans our lives. <laughs> and I'm so thankful for the way this happened in my life. It, it was the perfect timing, his perfect timing. That's my story. That's my journey to where I am right now and where I'm headed. <laughs> I will be sharing so much, I'm, I'm sure, 
through the future on vlogs and videos and will continue to share fashion and beauty and everything here on my my channel. Um, I hope you will support and love me in this decision and um, would love to have a subscribe if you're new here and hope you will stick around for my other videos. I hope you are doing well and enjoying the last days of summer. Our, my kids are starting school soon, so that's kind of exciting and sad at the same time that summer is coming to an end. But anyway, I hope you're doing well. And until next time on my next video, take care everyone. Bye.